We have the last of Yarbus's address here, lines 215 to 218. And let's go ahead and read those. Et nunc ille paris cum semiviro comitatu, maionia mentum mitra crinemque madentem sub nexus. Very nice alliteration through there. Rapto potitur nos munera templis, quipe tuis ferimus famamque foemus inanem. A nice alliteration down here, too. And this U should have been a V. Uh, sometimes, I think the text I got it from, it must have been U. So I should have changed that, but I missed it. And now, that Paris. Now, who is Paris? Paris is Aeneas here. He's calling him Paris because as Paris walked off with Helen, now Aeneas is walking off with who Yarbus thinks should have been his woman, Dido. So he's a woman stealer just like Paris was. And he's Trojan, so that's why he's that Paris. So, and now that Paris, cum semiviro comitatu, with his, in this ablative of accompaniment, with his half man retinue, or his semi man entourage here meaning they are less than real, than full men because rather than being hardy African stock, they are wimpy Eastern Trojan stock. And they have more cultured stuff. They're not as, you know, uh, they're not as rough and tough as the Africans in that area. This is the half-man ref- retinue, semi wiro so, and now that Paris, with his half-man retinue, or effeminate retinue, I just looked at Farr's note on that, uh, and now we got a word that's modifying the Paris, subnexus, having tied, okay, so this goes with Paris, it's nominative, and take a look at Farr's note, he directs you to an appendix because he's talking about this participle being used in a middle voice. And usually Latin doesn't do that, but sometimes they borrow this usage from the Greeks. And uh, so this comes from sugnecto, and this is the perfect participle form of it, but rather than being perfect passive participle, uh, it's used in a middle sense. So that means it's more active, in its sense of translation, and it can take objects. So let's translate it like that. So, and now that Paris, with his half-man retinue, having tied a, let's see here, tied his chin and dripping hair. This means dripping with perfume. So these are the objects of this mentum, his chin, and crinem madentem, and his dripping hair. Why would his hair be dripping with perfume? That was considered a custom among some ancient peoples, and Yarbus seems to think that this is, you know, an effeminate custom. So he's, it's going along with this, making Aeneas into sounding like a half-man or an effeminate sort of man. So having tied his chin and dripping hair with a Myonian mitra, with a Myonian cap. And so these are ablatives. He's tied them up with a Myonian cap. So it's a Phrygian or a Trojan sort of cap. Rapto potitur. Here's the, uh, oops, wrong color. That is the verb, potitur, has taken possession. And then rapto. This is ablative as a direct object of this verb here, of the, the plunder, or the prey, or the booty, meaning dido. This rapto means dido here. So Aeneas has taken control of his prey, or mastered the prey or the booty. Booty meaning plunder, something you would gain in war and take it by force. Now potitur is a deponent verb, and this is a present, third-person singular uh, 
use of it. And it takes an ablative object, so that's why rapto is in the ablative. You can take a look at Farr's note in the vocabulary. Nos munera templis quipe tuis ferimus famamque foemus inanem. And then we, this is, I think he uses the nos because it's for emphasis, you know, but we, usually when nos is used or pronouns used, it emphasizes it. This is what Aeneas is doing. But we bring, ferimus, we bear or bring, uh, munera, uh, Munera, gifts, that's neuter, plural. Templis tuis, to your temples. Tuis, templis, and those go together. And then quipe is an adverb, indeed. We, indeed, bring gifts to your temples. And foemus, and we cherish, if you this word, you've used this word several times in our readings, you might remember that Juno was cherishing for Carthage to be a great city. And that uh, this word was also used for Aeneas and Dido. They were uh, caressing each other throughout the winter. Fowere. So, and we cherish famam inanem. We cherish empty fame or empty reputation. What I think that means is he's saying your reputation, Jupiter, is empty because we're bringing uh, gifts to your temples, but you're not doing anything. So whatever they say about you, that must just be an empty rumor because it doesn't seem to be doing any good. So that that's how I would uh, take this phrase right here. So let's do the whole thing one more time and then we'll, we'll be done with this lesson. And now that Paris, with his half-man retinue, having tied on his chin and dripping hair a with a Mayonian cap, has taken possession of the plunder, the booty, meaning Dido. But, I'm putting in but, but it, we indeed are bringing gifts to your temples and cherishing the empty story of you and them and the, the empty reputation. All right, that does it. Wale te omnes.